So just wanted to kind of do a test fit before I took the gearbox apart and took out all the gears and stuff. And you can see how that's just going to slide back and forth. And then once I get the belt tension, I'll just lock it down. Now I know this is probably not going to be a quick change setup, but I decided to go with this slide plate type setup. Alright, so now that I've got it fitted and everything looks good, I guess because the gearbox is kind of notched here, I could have came and took these corners off, but to be honest, I didn't think about it, and I think it'll be fine. I'll probably go back and modify my drawing just to chamfer that edge. Alright, so let me uh, start taking this gearbox apart. Alright, well I've got these all the mounting bolts out, but there are some guide pins that uh, guide it onto the gearbox here. So I think what I'm going to do is try to get a screwdriver or something in here or maybe in the back and tap on it and see if we can just get it loosened up. Okay, well I was able just to work a screwdriver under here and it actually just kind of pops up fairly easy. Just gonna kind of lift it up and uh, see what we got. I think it's pretty much out now. It's probably going to be full of dripping oil, so uh, and I'm not sure how heavy it's going to be. Let me get something. All right, I just got a plastic pan here. Okay. All right. Well. I have been complaining to my buddy Wyatt that um, I was getting some oil weeping and dripping on my... It, it comes out this weep hole here and then it drips down and gets on my spindle. And I noticed that the first time I re-greased my bearings that it was kind of... the grease was kind of washed out. And I think I see why now. I never took the lid off here, but you can see the seal right here. The seal is just all bent. It's, it's like when it was installed, they, they must have mashed it there. But that's where this gear right here seats on there. So, all this time, uh, yeah, it leaks. How about that? That's not going to be able to be repaired. Uh, I'm not really going to need that seal so much because I'm not using the gearbox anymore. But man, that's a shame. All right, now my hands are all greasy. I'm going to empty this uh, grease out of here and, uh, or excuse me, gearbox oil. Remove some of these levers and uh, see what we've got all right well I've got all the oil out of the gearbox there and uh, I just made me a, a little scoop out of a can and then finished it off with a uh, a little bottle I could suction some of that up in the deep epoxies and then pretty much got everything out of there so I'm going to remove all of this right here I'll take that seal out see what's going on with that and uh, see where we're at well I've got the belt drive installed and I'm just checking the run out on the top hat I ended up putting three set screws because once I clamped one, uh, used one set screws to clamp it, 
I realized that it was pulling it off because you know the threads aren't really that tight and so even though you would think it would stay centered it actually pulls it to one side just a little bit so I've got it dialed in now to its within about a thousandth of an inch and uh, I've checked the run out on my spindle pulley here so let's uh, let me set up and we'll take a look at that it's not, not quite as easy to check the spindle pulling because I'm on that groove there but it looks like there's a couple of bumps where it bumps around but it looks like around three thousandths run out on the spindle pulley I also checked it with the pulley off I checked the quill that was coming through the spindle and the quill is actually about the same as this pulley around three to four thousand so I think the issue may be in that quill uh, just not sure I ran it and put a vibration meter on there so let's take a look at that I downloaded this vibration meter for my Samsung Galaxy and you can see it's reading zero zero but if you just barely tap on it just a little bit it starts bouncing around it gives you a scale alright so let's put it on the motor here and see if we see what kind of reading we got Okay, we're at zero now. Now, let's hope my phone doesn't get trapped inside the pulley there and tear it up. That right there is uh, a little over a thousand RPM. That's at 3,000 RPM. You can see the vibration is a little less. So there must be some harmonics involved there. And it is leaning up against the motor, so that's the whole head assembly vibration. I think that's pretty good. Alright guys, well, looks like the uh, belt drive turned out okay. Uh, I'm pretty happy overall with the way it turned out. My pulley height was just a hair off, and so... I had to raise up my motor plate here. I'm going to have to adjust my drawings to account for this. But I think I did pretty good considering it was about 40 thousandths. It needed to come up a little bit more. But uh, didn't really. it doesn't really affect anything. And later on I'm going to be putting a different motor on here. So I'll be making a whole other mounting plate. And so I'll just make an adjustment there. But it sounds good you can hear the fan running on my computer and control panel right now and then here is the motor running at 3000 rpm
So it's around 47 in the shop with the computer running in the power cabinet. And then with me talking, it spikes up to 68, 65, 67. And then with the machine running, it's around 67. And then you can see that when I talk, it raises it up. So not more than a conversation. That's pretty good considering what I was doing running the gearbox around 3400 RPM. That was loud. So not that bad, I think. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with it. So that wraps up this video, guys, on the belt drive conversion. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to comment. Thanks for watching the video. Thumbs up if you like the video. Please subscribe, and most importantly, be safe.